Hello, I'm Scott Stahl, GDG organizer, Flutter community leader, and professional Flutter developer with DevAngels London. Today, we're going to take a look at how you can leverage the power of build context and themes in your app. Now, context is pretty important. Let's take a look. Let's say you're talking to someone about their first app. All right, and you look at it and you tell them, hey, that's not too bad. Now they're gonna take that as a compliment. But what happens if you're over at your wife's mother's house and she's been cooking all day, working in a hot kitchen? You sit down at the table, you take a bite, you say, hey, that's not too bad. Yeah, let's not do that. Because context matters. There are people who will tell you that context is like the boogeyman. It's big, it's scary, it should be avoided. You know what? No. I'm telling you straight up, they're wrong. Build context can be your best friend and one of the most powerful things in Flutter. What if you were building a house? All right, let's take a look at this. This is a beautiful view. Lots of sky, hills in the distance. I mean, anybody would want to live here. But if you were to try to build a house on this kind of a foundation, well, the results are pretty predictable. See, this is what happens if you don't use your build context. But why? Well, what happens is if you don't use the build context, you end up recreating a bunch of things that they're already there. And you make life a lot harder on yourself. You start making custom theme files that for your own text themes and you use files for your app colors. It's all there. All you have to do is use it. But what is it? Well, to tell you the truth, build context is an element. Not helpful, huh? Yeah. Okay, sure. All right. Let me see if I can explain this. Funny. Look, build context, it's like your junk drawer. I mean, it's all in there. There's everything. There are ketchup packets in there from the 90s. Okay. No matter what you want, it's going to be in there. Or not. I know. I know. Look, when you go into build context, you're going to find things like size, depend on inherited widget of an exact type, you're going to find render object, you've got the page builder, you've got describe widget, you've got find ancestor widget of exact type, which is right there. And that is one of the things you're going to want if you're doing your own state management without any packages. That and find ancestor state of type. Many, many times people will have told you that when you use things like this, they go up the tree and they find the first closest instance of whatever type it is you're looking for, and it returns that one. Well, in those cases, yeah, sure. But what if you want the first instance in the whole app, the one that's all the way up closest to the top of the tree? Well, that's what this is for. Find root ancestor state of type. Sure. Now we've got the bad boy. Depend on inherited widget of exact type. Will you knock it off? Wise guy. Look, depend on inherited widget of exact type. What this does is it doesn't explicitly call
call it, but it implicitly calls dot of context. And that is what gives you access to your themes. So what we get when we run this is we get a theme dot of context, which returns a theme data. Now, you want to talk about a junk drawer. Okay, we're going to find things in there like primary color, background color, primary color, dark color scheme, card color, focus color, primary color, light shadow color, hint color, primary swatch, splash color, toggleable active color. Yeah, I, when would you use this? I got nothing. Sorry. But then you get into your themes. Now, you've got the radio theme, you've got the icon theme, you've got the button bar theme, the dialogue theme, the divider theme, the app bar theme, the time picker theme, the text button theme, the elevated button theme, and text theme. S yeah, that's right. There's more than one text theme. We have text theme, and we have primary text theme, which it's a little confusing when you think about the fact that primarily the one that we use is that one. Just saying. So when you get into this, what you're going to find is things like theme.ofcontext.text theme dot title small all right look what this really means is you're going to look in theme that is in this context you're going to go find the text theme within that theme and in that you're going to find the title small parameter and this is going to have the information you need for the size font of title small now you might be thinking, hey, I've never heard of this title small. What's going on? Well, Material Design 3. That's what's going on. See, the wonderful people who take care of topography had us using one thing in 2014, another thing in 2018, and now, hey, maybe they got bored. I can't think of any other reason. I, I don't know about you. But look, you have things in here like body large for a size, then body medium, body small, display large, display medium, display small, title large, title medium, title small, label large, label medium, label small, headline large, headline medium. I'll give you three guesses. Then we've got another one that is so useful, it's ridiculous. It, it, this thing, you got to be careful how you use it, though, because if you put it in the wrong places, it can be called repeatedly unnecessarily. So you want to be careful and make sure you know what you're doing. But this is media query dot of wrong way context. What this is going to return is a media query data object. Do you care about what it is? Probably not. You probably just want to know how to use it. Well, the way you use it is media query dot of context dot something something. Yeah. Look, you can get the size. What's the size? That's the size of the physical screen. That's not the size of your app. Although, if you are running a desktop app, that's going to be the size of the window. But within the size, you find the width and you find the height. You can also find out if the user is using a screen reader for accessibility or if they've asked for the text to be bold. You can find out what the pixel ratio is. 
of the screen. You can get the device orientation. Did the user set the screen for high contrast? What's the platform brightness? Do they want text scaling? Are notches blocking the screen or is the keyboard covering anything? It's all right there in the media query and all you have to do is use your build context. Really, there is so much that this can do for you. It's insane. I can understand, though, that this might be confusing. A lot of things are confusing at first, but there are lots of places where you can get help, such as the Flutter community Slack. Now, this Slack, believe it or not, has almost 20,000 members. That's crazy. And you get to it and a lot of other places that you can get help through the community page on the Flutter team's official website, which is, of course, at flutter.dev community. There you'll find links to all kinds of things like the Discord, the Stack Overflow, Reddit, the Google Developer Groups, and of course the Slack, as well as links to things like the Flutteristas group, which is for those who identify as women or non-binary. And there are links to meetup groups all over the world so you can find other people in your area who enjoy Flutter. There's so much that you can do with Flutter, especially when you consider the way that build context and themes put so much power at your fingertips. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've gotten a lot out of it. And I can't wait to see what you build in the Flutterverse. I'm Scott Stahl, and I thank you for watching.